Hello Autodesk people. My name is Jay Ayala of Autodesk. I'm an engineering technical specialist based out of the Pacific Northwest and the video you're about to see is AutoCademy P 2010 Interference Detection Part 2. This video is two of three in a series. The previous video was how to use the tool. This video will concentrate on collaboration and the next video will collaborate on visualization. This video is how to collaborate with the results. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start right where we left off from the previous video. Now, I just want to remind you that what we did was we ran an interference detection and we're keeping the mass elements when we're ending the analysis mode. What we also have done is we've taken some tags and uh, applied them to the, all the mass elements. Now, moving forward, what, what one might want to do is insert a schedule. Now, you can pick on any schedule to get this command started, but before you actually place it, you can change the style to MEP interference schedule. Okay, following the command prompt, what it's doing here is it's asking me to select the entire, uh, all the objects. So I'll just select the entire um, screen here. And taking a look at this schedule a little closer, I can see that I have the number, the interfering object, and who it's, whose responsibility it is. So let, let's take a look at um, starting to look at the selection of what's going on here. So what I can do is I can tell AutoCADM P to show me the line item that I'm selecting. And what it'll do is AutoCADM P, if I simply hold control on my keyboard when I make a selection on the line item, it will zoom right to where that object is. So it's very easy to find where those objects are in space. Okay, so um, let's talk about responsibility. So as in the previous video, yellow interferences mean that they're soft interferences. And what I want to do is I want to select all of the soft interferences because I know that the person who's responsible for the soft interferences is the mechanical engineer. So I'll just simply type that in here for the responsibility. And notice that my schedule will automatically update. Okay, so I know that the red interferences are interferences between ducts and walls. So the people responsible for those interferences are the mechanical engineers and the architects who are working on this project. So again, my schedule automatically updates. And uh, taking a look at what else we might want to do with this, we may want to find out what kind of interferences these are. So I can simply select a, to add a column and tell it to tell me what type of interference it is. So here we have soft interferences versus hard interferences. Okay, so it may be that we're dealing with someone who doesn't use AutoCAD at all. So we may want to export this information out to an Excel format. So we can do that with Excel, older versions, and even comma delimited files as well. Okay, so um, let's talk about our steps moving forward. What we want to do is we want to have a file with only the mass elements the tags and the schedule table. So what I'll do here is I'll select one tag and use select similar feature to select the rest of the tags in the file. I'll also select the schedule table just by picking on it. And by using the quick select tool inside of my properties palette, here it is, what I can do is I can filter everything else out except for the mass elements. So here are the object type, I'll just pick mass element and I'll include it in the new selection set and I'll append it to the current selection set which I already have selected. So now I have mass elements, tags, and the schedule table. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll use my uh, copy to clipboard function and I'll create a new file. Here's my new file, my Q new button. And in this file what I'll do is I'll go to my home ribbon and under the modify panel there's a slide out and underneath that slide out we can see the paste functions. One of them is paste to original coordinates. So I'll use that. And what it'll do is it'll bring in those mass elements to the same exact spot as they were in the, uh, in the analysis. So what, I'll, what I want to do is I want to show you this in 3D and in 2D at the same time. These are actually 3D elements that, uh, that live within this file. And they're only taking up the space where the, the clash happens. So Moving forward, what we might want to do is we can save this file and send it to all of our AutoCademy P users to help us collaborate. 
But what happens when we're dealing with consultants who don't have AutoCAD MEP? Well, we have solutions for them as well. What we can do is we can export a DWF file, and this creates a 2D intelligent file that has a lot of information, and I'll just save it on my desktop. Now, I can also create a 3D DWF file, which they can use if they want to, but uh, there's a lot of value there as well. So I'll just name this MEP Interference 3D, and I'll place it also on my desktop. Now, DWF is design review software. It's a free viewer that you, anybody can download from Autodesk's website. Let me show you what that is. So here's the design review software. It's very lightweight and uh, we can use this. Here, here you see the 3D file. And I'll zoom in and I, what I want to show you though is not that it's 3D. What I want to show you is that it is packed with all of that information. So here you can see that it is a duct and a wall interference and also that this is a mass element that represents a hard interference. So th there's a lot of information that we can send out to our consultants who are not on AutoCAD MEP. So what you're seeing right now is one, one view in this file, but I can click and drag the 2D view in here as well. So now I have the 2D and the 3D view here. As well. So I'll save this DWF file as MEP interference 2D and 3D onto my desktop. Now, just really quick, I want to show you what's going on here. This is a very, very tiny file, 38 kilobytes, and it includes 3D, 2D, and all of the information that you would find in AutoCAD MEP. So, if that doesn't work either, what we can do is we can also export this information out to a PDF file. And if a consultant doesn't have design review, if he only has PDF capabilities, we can give him that information. Unfortunately, he won't have the type of interference. He'll just have a graphic snapshot of what's going on with the interferences. So let me show you the difference between the file sizes here. Now this is a little bit smaller, but keep in mind it's only one view, a top view, and it's 2D, and it doesn't have any of that information. It's 30 kilobytes. So DWF and PDF, we can use that to collaborate as well. Let me show you the flip side though. Let me show you what a consultant would want to do with those results that you gave them. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll bring in an architectural file here and I'm going to assume the role of an architect and let's say that I just got this PDF from you as the MEP engineer who's doing the collaboration. I can insert an XREF and uh, here you can see I can do DWF files or PDF files. So what I'll do is I'll just select the PDF file. Okay, now there's a catch with a PDF. A PDF is raster based, it is not vector based. So what happens is it doesn't come in to the right origin. But that doesn't matter because we can select the, uh, the PDF file here and we can turn on the ability to snap to the PDF element. Okay, so what, what I'm getting at is what we're going to do is we're going to move the PDF to the right location. So first of all, I'm just going to simplify my architecture here. I'm seeing gypsum board. I don't need to see a gypsum board and exterior wall. I just need to see the exterior portion of the wall. So I'll bring it to a low level of detail. And now I'll just use the regular move command and using snaps, I'll move my PDF to where the wall is supposed to be. And I'll make one more move and, and match this up. So again, using the snaps, I'll just use to a perpendicular point of this wall. And now I can see that all of my interferences line up exactly where they're supposed to be. So a couple of things you can do here. You can use the same method with DWG files for AutoCAD MEP, regular AutoCAD files. You can bring in DWF files and PDF files. So the collaboration is pretty limitless. So four things to remember about the interference detection tool. By keeping the mass elements when ending the analysis mode, you can facilitate collaboration among different disciplines and consultants. Leverage the AutoCAD MEP schedule table objects to share the results of your interferences with your extended design team. You can collaborate with other AutoCAD MEP users by simply sharing the mass elements and schedules. You can also collaborate with non-AutoCAD MEP users by using the DWF technology and PDF capabilities. On behalf of Autodesk, my name is Jay Ayala and the video you just saw is AutoCAD MEP 2010 Interference Detection Part 2.